Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Get ready to hear the truth about America on a show that's not immune to the facts with your host, Dan Bongino. No, no, no. You are not going to crap all over the cops on Fox News and get on a debate with me, <laughs> and I'm not going to let it happen. So big time out, no way. Welcome to the Dan Bongino <laughs> Show. Producer Joe, how are you today? Right. Well, as always, good to be with my what you see is what you get, buddy, yeah. Dan. You know, yeah. So yeah, last man. night I was on Ingram, I, uh, a Lawn Laura Ingram show where I debated Jonathan Harris, a liberal who came on. I don't know, yeah. Jonathan, it's not personal. He made some silly comment about the cops, and I dropped the neutron bomb on his head on the show, and I sent it over to Joe this morning. And Joe's like, you know, we were kind of chatting before the show. They tell you in radio, never say what you were saying before the show. Of course, we don't really care about any yeah. of the radio rules ever, right, Joe? Don't they say it? Don't ever say what you were talking about in the break. Yeah. Screw that. Yeah. We invent our own rules here. And Joe goes, I think that's why people like the show, Dan. I'm not kidding. This was a conversation five minutes before we came out. Yeah. He goes, it just is what it is. There's no gloss. There's no lipstick. There is makeup. If you can see it, my face is all messed up. I had to put this. I have to put this stuff on my face, but my skin is so dry from the sun. You can see it's all patchy now. There is a little makeup, but there's definitely no lipstick. And when I mean lipstick, I don't nope. mean actual, actual <laughs> lipstick. I mean like the lipstick on a pink thing. We make no effort right. whatsoever to cover up any of the scar battle scars on this show it is what it is so i had this segment last it night is. about the tempe arizona starbucks incident where police officers were shamefully grotesquely asked to leave a tempe arizona starbucks because a snowflake customer f uh, did not feel safe dreaded air quotes no. in the presence of the police officers so i had this fiery debate i've got that for you i've got some incredible new economic data again blowing out of the water more stupid liberal fairy tales i've got some video of the el paso customs and border patrol chief annihilating allison Car yeah. camarado on cnn joe gets to see all this before because <laughs> he cuts the videos uh, so don't go anywhere cool. it's going to be a stacked show all right today's show brought to you by our buddies at Vincero watches. You ever see me around with this watch on? This is a beauty. You may say, how much that watch cost? 20000 30000 Not even close. You're not even in the ballpark. It looks like it, doesn't it? I love this watch. Check that out. Yeah, Vincero watches. It's like a million bucks, man. Thank, it is. It's a sweet looking watch. Yeah. I told you, next time you come down, I got an extra. I'm going to give you one. I mean it. They are beautiful, I'm, I'm beautiful watches. My brother is a big watch guy. You name all these super high-end five-figure brands, he has them all. He said to me, what's that watch you wear when I see you on TV? It's Vincero. Vincero watches. A quality wristwatch is one of those small things every guy needs. When you've got a nice watch on, it changes the way you carry yourself and the way people look at you. Come on, let's be honest. We're partnering on this show with Vincero. You can get a watch that makes you stand taller and feel more confident than you ever have. Exclusively for listeners of the Dan Bongino Show, Vincero is offering an extra 15% off. They're already affordable watches. You will get no better watch at this price point. Go to VinceroWatches.com forward slash Bongino and use code Bongino to save an extra 15%. That's Vincero, V-I-N-C-E-R-O Watches.com forward slash Bongino and use code Bongino for 15% off VinceroWatches.com slash Bongino. It's our first time working with Vincero. They sent me a couple of their watches. You can see them. These things are eye catchers. They are absolutely beautiful. Not only they have watches for men, they have watches for women. We see the beautiful Paula. Yes, there's a watch in that picture, too. Ooh. Check it out. Paula with a stunning Vincero on right there. That's my the corner of my living room right there. The beautiful Paula with her Vincero. They are the best value in the business. You're not going to find a better made watch yeah. for a price anywhere. Check it out. This deal is too good to pass up. VinceroWatches.com forward slash Bongino. Promo code Bongino for 15% off. All right, let's go. Oh. Uh, almost. One of these days, I'll catch that bell just right. Okay, so story number one. Enough teasing this clip. So I was on with Jonathan Harris last night. Uh, I was a liberal, which is fine. I always like debating liberals on Fox. The fact that Fox actually has liberals, I always appreciate. I know some people get angry. Why does Fox have liberals on? Why? Oh. 
Well, I mean, folks, this, this, if, if you're comfortable in your arguments like I am, you should love debating liberals on Fox because they always make themselves look silly with ridiculous arguments. So here we are last night. You know, I don't like doing cuts of myself that often. We keep it extra rare because some of you have already seen it. But in short, it's the end of the debate. And I just want to show you the response and why I responded the way I did to the ridiculous claim that people who are unsafe, feel unsafe around police officers in a Starbucks were somehow in the right with this absurd incident. Play the cut. But I think I was looking at some of the data and that was one of the things I, I was thinking to myself, the police on average, according to reports, kill about a thousand people a year since since about 2015. It's been in the 900s, 990s in some cases. The majority of them are actually white men. So I can understand if this is a white guy, maybe him feeling a little uncomfortable, so police, a little unsafe. So you're so. On the, the, your answer to this Starbucks thing is the police are killing people. Will no, I'm just, I'm just street, saying, no, no, I'm just, no, I'm just saying that I can understand why that person may have oh. felt uncomfortable. That's what I'm saying. Mangino's going to flip. He's well, going to flip. Former I mean, police it's, officer. It's I mean, just, it's that, data. So, so the data, Jonathan I, says, indicates serious? that people are... I mean, Jonathan is, a, is kind of is calm, but he said the data indicates that people are rightly concerned. Is that... I that don't really could, care yeah. if he's calm. Uh, what he just said was so dumb that I'm stunned he said it on national television. Are facts dumb? Uh, a police you... officer, the worst day of a police officer's life. I was there. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Jonathan wasn't. The worst day of your life is a use of force incident. Number one, Laura, because God forbid you have to use force. You think that's funny, John? It's think probably that's pleasant? worse for like the people a cop goes to roll call. I'm not I'm done sure. talking. I'm we not done talking. 20 seconds, Dan. We're going to hard break. 10 seconds. Secondly, you're probably going to get sued and lose your livelihood after you unfortunately had to use force against another human being. If so John had served, he may numbers, know something about check it. All right, we'll check the numbers. We'll have you both I'll back. I'll beat it. Get we got to do an hour. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Not really. oh, well. um, yeah, I, I, I oh. listen. Let me give you a little backstory <laughs> behind the scenes and, and how this works. If I have my home, this is the same studio, by the way. We just changed the background, so I do these appearances oh. on Fox. And here's the deal: I love Laura's show, but it's a little late for me. I'm an early bird. I'm not like, don't let the, you know, square jaw uh, and, and basically athletic look fool you, okay? I am, uh, these are all show muscles. I go to bed at like 9 o'clock. I am an old dude falling apart. I need like 22 hours of sleep during the day. So, 10.45 appearance, p.m. Eastern time, which it was, I said, I'm a little salty as is when I get on Laura's show. So, you're already yeah. starting with me at a 9.672 on the salty scale, right? So, when you get, I'm always open for a debate, but if you're going to throw out irrational, without context, absurd statistics to impugn the integrity of America's police officers, when I know uh, many police officers myself having been one and a federal agent, you can expect flame to come right back. So that's the kind of the backstory to why I'm sitting there looking so frustrated because I'm already tired and I'm annoyed that this guy said something so dumb. I didn't honestly did not expect that stupid statistic to come out of his mouth. Why do I say dumb? Because it is entirely I devoid of context. Folks, here's what I can't say on the Ingram show because, you know, the segments are five minutes and they had a hard break. So Jonathan Harris cites a statistic saying, hey, these people who complained about the cops having a beverage in the Tempe, Arizona Starbucks, I can understand because police officers shoot people who are white men. That was basically his line. And he gives us cites a number, I don't even know if it's accurate, about a thousand people a year who are largely mm -hmm. white. Therefore, he jumps to the conclusion that it is rational to fear police officers if you're a white male. And I thought... Okay, Let, let's try for a second to take Jonathan seriously, even though obviously yeah. what you know he just said is a leap of faith so devoid of common sense that only an idiot would believe it. But that's, you know, liberals do that stuff all the time. So, yeah. Joe, I will bet you there are thousands of drowning incidents worldwide and boating accidents every year. When you bet, maybe thousands. Uh, let's underestimate. Oh, just yeah. for the sake. Just, let's say hundreds. There, although I, I think thousands is probably, I don't even know. Okay. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter. But let's just say there are thousands of, of incidents or hundreds of boating drownings each year from boating accidents, right? Okay. Joe, do you have a fear of boats where if you see a boat, you feel unsafe? Uh, not a trick question at all. No, not a trick. No, Dan. And again, I'm not, not a trick follow-up either. Why do you not have a fear of boats? 
Well, first off, I don't use them a lot. And most of the time, they, they're they pretty cool, you know? Oh, okay, thank you. And common sense. Because Joe Our understands skills. that, number one, boats are largely not dangerous. They're enjoyable. Right. If you follow basic safety procedures, don't go out in a hurricane, wear a life jacket, keep your boat in decent shape. The chances of Joe are being involved in a boating accident and a subsequent drowning are not zero. We get, I get on, uh, you know, I drive cars all the time. The chance of being in an accident isn't zero. It's just very small. Knock on wood, there right? But I don't fear right. cars. I don't fear boats either. I like boats. I don't particularly like the water that much, but I don't fear boats. Why? Because it's irrational. Hey. We don't live our lives based on inconsequential risks where the risk of something happening to you is close to zero, not zero. We don't do that. Likewise, Jonathan's logic that because a thousand people were involved in a use of force incident with the police and shot, maybe, I don't even know if his statistics are accurate or what they are. I don't know where he even got them from. The chances of you being involved in that are infinitesimally small. Don't break the law. Obey a police officer's orders. Don't be a jerk in a police encounter. And the chances are near 100%. Not much is going to happen to you. Does that mean there are not malign use of force incidents with occasional bad cops? Absolutely does not mean that. Does that mean the chances of you being involved in a use of force incident with the police are zero? Absolutely not. The chances are not zero. The chance of that is infinitesimally small. So for you to impugn the integrity... Of the 99.99999% of police officers who do the right thing every day for relatively little money and put their collective butts on the line so you don't have to, Democrat strategist John, to malign, malign their integrity over an infinitesimally small percentage of people make a leap of faith that you should feel unsafe in front of a cop like I should feel unsafe on a boat because someone drowned in the Indian Ocean on a boat seven years ago is utterly, completely ridiculous. But ridiculosity, to invent a new word we use on the show often, is the hallmark of liberalism. They claim to believe in things like science, and yet when the data confirms to them that their fear is entirely irrational, the chances of you, I'm using Jonathan's analogy, he was talking about white guys or whatever he said, yeah. as a white guy, he didn't even mention minorities, the chance of you as a white guy being involved in a deadly police shooting while doing nothing wrong and contributing nothing to the incident, breaking the law, pulling out a gun on a police officer, God forbid, the chances of you being are so infinitesimally small, it is entirely, completely irrational to you to live, for you to live your life by those guidelines. Mm -hmm. But he believes in science, Joe. It's like me saying, Joe, I'm getting paid by our podcast company and I'm investing every dollar of my income in the lotto. Now, you may say, well, how does yeah. that apply to John Harris's logic? It's the same logic. The chances of My me God. winning yeah. the lotto are, are, are <laughs> almost zero. They're not zero, but they're almost yeah. zero. It is almost. entirely irrational for me to invest my hard-earned income into lottery tickets every day. It's basic science of statistics. <laughs> oh, these people are so frustrated. And it's really, this Jonathan's not, he's not dopey. And he's not really here to defend himself, which is feature. But I, I don't accept those attacks on police officers ever. I'm not suggesting to you there's not some bad apples. There always are. But I was a police officer. And these are largely good men and women working for very little money to run to the problem while everyone else is running away. And to cite some ridiculous statistic with no context at all. A thousand people were shot. What were they doing, Joe? Were a thousand people pulling guns on police officers? You don't know. He's No context at all. Yeah. To, to say to you that you should somehow be afraid of police officers because of very limited, isolated use of force incidents, devoid of any context, is so dumb only a liberal would believe it. Shame, shame, big time shame. All right, moving hmm. on.
More uh, journalism. Again, uh, we have to go oh, with the journal good. air quotes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Between... <laughs> More journalism. Here we go. <laughs> From the board journalism file. With the... It's sad we have to put the air quotes around journalism because journalism is dead. It died a long time ago, um, way before the Trump era. But, it, I mean, you can bury it six feet deep now. So Meet the Press put out this ridiculous tweet. And I want a hat tip to Selena Zito who said, well, you guys are really opening Pandora's box with this one. So now, Joe, this is from Meet the Press, an alleged journalism out, uh, outfit, you know, with uh, Chuck Todd. I think he works over there, right? Details to think about Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader. Details about McConnell's ancestor, discovered by NBC, again, alleged journalist, through a search of ancestry and census records, Joe, came in the wake of recent <laughs> hearings on reparations before the House Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties. What did they find? These journalists... Mitch McConnell, who opposes reparations, is descended from two slave owners. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh-oh. Oh, are you really sure you want to go down that road, NBC? So let me get this straight. Yeah. Pretty much universally accepted among sane, sentient, rational beings... Slavery's an epic stain on the United States. I don't think that's a source of contention if you have a brain on your head or inside your, your, your cranium. The owning of another human being via slavery is an unfathomable stain on what happened in our country. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Now, hundreds of thousands of men died to wipe that stain clear of our country. But are you really sure, NBC, that you want to somehow, again, I'm, I'm not a huge McConnell fan, never have been. I think he's done some good things. It's not personal. But are you really sure you want to start digging up the ancestry records of a man who has no attachment to a slave owner? There are no slave owners in the United States, nor are there are any slaves. I thought that was obvious to NBC. Apparently, their journalists have a tough time with that. You sure we want to start going back generations and imputing the integrity of people today for the actions of ancestors that existed before McConnell ever knew who they were? Are we really sure we want to do that? Joe, may I suggest to you maybe the next step then, if this is, remember the new rules, Joe, the left's yes. new rules now, new rules, you are now responsible for the behavior of ancestors you never knew. You cannot in any way right. control their behavior. You had no attachment right. to them whatsoever outside of a gene code passed down to you. None. Right. You are now responsible for their actions too. Joe, may I suggest that maybe conservative journalists should adopt these new rules now and let's start going back to the heads of NBC, the reporters on NBC, the reporters on CNN, the Washington Compost, the New York Slime, wow. ABC, yeah. CBS, maybe MSDNC, maybe we should start checking Rachel Maddow's history, Chuck Todd, everyone else, and we should start writing stories about their history too. Selena Zito nailed it. I'm not sure you want to open that Pandora's box. New rules, folks. The left wants to invent a bunch of new rules. We'll take those new rules and shove them right down their throats. All right. Make them live by the same rules they now want to make Mitch McConnell live by. What about the lineage of the Democrat Party, Joe? Given that Mitch McConnell is apparently responsible oh, oh. for the behavior of some... Oh, I see you know where I'm going with this one. If he's responsible yeah. for the behavior of ancestors he never had any connection to outside of a gene code, why is the Democrat Party not responsible for the gene code of the Democrat Party? The Dixiecrats, the segregationists, and the slave owners were... Yes, that's right, Jim Crow South. Democrats, that's Democrat. right. Democrats! Now... No sane person's going to hold a current Democrat running for office, I don't know, responsible for de jure uh, and de facto racism in the South. It's not the right thing. They didn't do that. But if those are the new rules, then I suggest conservative outlets start writing stories about the Democrat Party. They're obviously responsible. Democrats handed down to uh, other Democrats a party lineage of slavery and Jim Crow. That was a Democrat thing. Bull yeah. Connor and others. Are you responsible for them too? I'm not so sure you want to dance around with that Pandora's box. 
Now, I've got more media malfeasance in a second. I mean, we've got Ann Coulter wrote a damning piece in Breitbart about how the Democrats and alleged your journalism is entirely dead. Bury it. Put the nail in the coffin. It is over. Journalism is over. It's all activism now. How activist journalists are trying to make, as I predicted yesterday, Joe, the Jeffrey Epstein scandal entirely about Donald Trump because that's what journalists do. They don't report facts. They, they're activists yeah. full time. All right. Before we get to that, today's show also brought to you by our buddies at Policy Genius. Hey, part of adulthood is having to do things you don't really want to do. Like red eye flights, working late, visiting in laws, and getting life insurance, but you gotta get it. But another part of adulthood is learning to delegate what you hate. And while you can't delegate a visit to your in laws, you can definitely delegate life insurance shopping to people who know what they're doing. PolicyGenius.com, PolicyGenius.com, compare quotes in just two minutes. PolicyGenius.com is an easy way to support, uh, excuse me, to shop for life insurance online in just two minutes. Compare quotes from top insurers and find your best price. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team will handle all the paperwork and red tape. There's no sales pressure. There's no hidden fees, just financial protection and peace of mind. And Policy Genius just doesn't make life insurance easy. They can help you find the right home insurance, auto insurance, and disability insurance. So if you need life insurance, but you don't want to deal with all the legwork and the nonsense, PolicyGenius.com, PolicyGenius.com, the easy way to compare all top insurers and find the best value for you. PolicyGenius.com. Delegate out what you don't like doing, especially if you're not looking forward to getting life insurance at PolicyGenius.com. Compare quotes and handle it for you. Okay, moving on. So Ann Coulter had a piece up at Breitbart. It's a very good one about how the Democrats uh, and, and, and the media, that you know, but I just said the same thing twice, are desperate to turn the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. He is the wealthy uh, hedge fund manager who, if you saw yesterday and we covered it yesterday, there are now very serious criminal allegations of, of, of grotesque sexual misconduct with minors, with, with basically children. Mm. The, the, the allegations are disturbing and because it's a, you know, we try to keep it a relatively family-friendly show. I, I, you can surmise what it's about. It's, it's gross. It's just really disgusting conduct. There are photos involved. Uh, the conduct is, is, is the, the allegations are, are reprehensible. Now, Epstein, as I said yesterday, I don't care what, who or why he's connected. to. If they're Democrats, Republicans, and you were involved in the trafficking of minors, the sexual exploitation of minors, nobody cares. You need to be prosecuted to the absolute fullest extent of the law and the key should be thrown away for you participating in this grotesque malfeasance now having said that as ann coulter points out in her piece at breitbart they it'll be in the show notes by the way bongino.com as always if you subscribe to my email list i will send you the best articles of the day please subscribe it helps us out a lot ann coulter media magic how a democrat pedophile became a quote trump scandal she goes out and lists out in length, at length, Joe, in this Breitbart piece, how the people involved in this scandal, again, not that this matters to me, it only matters to me because the media is trying to flip the script and make this about Trump, how the people involved in this scandal from beginning to end are largely Democrats mm -hmm. from a Democrat prosecutor, Joe, in Florida, who stepped in it on this case and blew it at the state level. So it was then turned over to then the Southern District of Florida, United States Attorney uh, Alexander Acosta, who now is in Trump's cabinet. But the reason, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, it was turned over. The reason it was turned over to Acosta is because the Democrat local prosecutor blew it in the case. Not only that, Epstein was a donor, a heavy donor to prominent Democrats. Now, as I discussed yesterday, there was a source of mine regarding some situation. Now, some of you have asked, you know, and, and rightly so, well, why wasn't that information reported? Because as I said to you, you have to witness something and the witnessing of the inside, I have to be delicate here, ranges from potentially inappropriate to potentially criminal. There's... A process here. I have to work with someone else on this. It's not my information. Again, I'm limited in what I can do. I'm trying my best here on this. You have to, you know, I can only do what I can do. I can't just report to you salacious stuff just for the sake. Again, that's not what we do here. 
But fascinatingly enough, Bill Clinton issued a statement yesterday about Epstein. Basically saying, well, I don't know anything about this. I only took flights with Epstein on this plane where the alleged sexual misconduct with minors occurred. I only took flights in 2002 and 2003. Okay. That conveniently lines up with a fascinating timeline I have been given information on. So you were on the flights, which we know because we have the flight logs. You were on the Lolita Express, as they called it. So you were there. Right. But you don't know anything about anything. You sure about that? It's a very carefully worded statement about what he doesn't know. More to come when I get it. Can only give you what I get myself. All right, moving on. Folks, there's some really great reporting going on right now in right-leaning and moderate and fair journalistic down-the-middle outlets on the economy. I mean really great reporting. Um, Andy Kessler wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal today. Uh, let me just get out there. The, the op-ed, by the way, is called The Key to the Long Expansion Logistics by Andy Kessler, Wall Street Journal Opinion, July 7, 2019. Uh, Kessler's op-eds in the Wall Street Journal are priceless. Listen, I, I know the journals, it's, it's not, you know, sometimes they're a little left-leaning when it comes to immigration. But I, I really, I can't recommend their opinion columns in strong enough terms because they usually nail it on the economy. And some of the writers like Kessler are so good. Um, it's worth your time. It's a little expensive a subscription, but it's worth your time. I, 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 they're not a sponsor. I'm getting out of it. Um, I just enjoy it. been reading it since I'm in my 20s. Uh, but Kessler's piece is incredible. Some of the journalism and opinion pieces going on in the economy are excellent right now. I cover them on here on the show. Why? Why is it important to you? Why does this matter? Why do you need this? Folks, 2020 is around the corner. And when you look at opinion polling on the president, where the president, President Trump, of course, consistently polls high, the highest, as a matter of fact, is on the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, people vote on the economy. Swing voters, independents, Trump fence sitters who can go either way in 2020 in swing states that are going to decide this election. Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, Ohio, Florida. Pennsylvania, critical voters in those states, even Virginia, which may be in play, New Hampshire, critical voters are going to decide if you're playing the numbers on the economy, which requires us as partakers in the American experience and hopefully the MAGA movement here, I need this president reelected. We need him to be reelected because the alternative is economic destruction with Bernie and these other people. It is our job to go out there and be ambassadors for the difference between socialism and capitalism, free markets, and government planning. Some of the journalism being done is excellent, exposing the differences between the Obama economy and this. But one of them who writes this out is Andy Kessler. What he talks about in this piece, and I addressed this yesterday, I want to get into two parts here. I want to show you a graph in a minute uh, by Martha Gimbel, hat tip at Martha Gimbel on Twitter, who has a, a really simple, I'll get to it in a second, shows a simple graph of a debunking liberal talking points, which we're going to have to do in the economy about wage growth. But first, I discussed yesterday on the show how this economy, we are now living through one of the longest expansions, I believe the longest expansion, economic expansion in American history. Now, it was slow in the Obama years, just based on growth rates. It's not me trying to knock Obama unnecessarily. It's just a fact. His GDP mm -hmm. growth rates, economic growth rates were slow. They were below the historical average because he believed in taxes and regulation. But we are now living through the longest economic expansion in American history. Kessler's piece surmises why that may be. And he opens up in the beginning by talking about how it was a basically a tenet of business school, an unbreakable rule in business school in the past, that economic expansions, show lasted four years. Mm -hmm. Business cycles lasted four. After four years, get ready for the recession. So that's how he opens up the piece. And he gives a couple of examples of where that happened. He then says, if that's the case, why has this expansion gone on for so long? And he gives a 10 years. He gives a fascinating example. One of them, which I explained yesterday, is not in the piece. I don't want to redo yesterday's show, but I explained yesterday the sharing economy. How Uber, Airbnb, the sharing of everything from private jets to John Deere tractors now in the sharing economy has enabled us to take 
really what were useless assets, cars parked in driveways, apartments nobody was using, and now bring them into a productive economy where people are now using unused assets. I described it yesterday. Please listen to yesterday's show if you haven't heard it. It was about a 10-minute segment on that. That has helped keep inflation down because we don't have to produce new cars. There are thousands of Uber drivers using cars they already have. We don't have to buy new cabs, build new taxis. They're all ready there. That's one reason I believe our expansion has surpassed four or five years and has gone on 10 years. He gives another excellent reason. We covered this in business school when I went there too. And you know, I don't like touting educational bona fides. It always sounds lame. But if you go to business school, you'll learn about this too. It's called JIT, just in time. And Kessler talks about how in the past, Joe, before email, when everything was done via phone calls and snail mail, and you didn't have sophisticated mm -hmm. barcoding, big data, AI, interpreting inventory management, what would happen, Joe? You had to make big predictions about inventory. And he gives a great example about the video game industry. How the video game industry, at the end of their four-year cycle, right, where it used to be four years long, All right. the, they bet big on this. I, I, I don't remember this. But apparently they bet big on E.T., the video game. Remember E.T., the movie? E.T. Yeah, I don't remember. remember the game. I don't yeah. either. Not, but he writes about it. Yes. In how they <laughs> Put the little glowing finger up. How they bet big on the E.T. video game. Huge. And because they didn't have sophisticated data management, maybe price elasticity formulas, and, and ways to predict uh, what, the, what the demand would be and the pricing of it, they, they made millions of these things. Well, you know what happened with those millions of ET, or the Atari or whatever the cartridges? They wound up burying them in the ground because nobody wanted them. <laughs> they took a multi-million dollar bath on the ET video game. He then goes on to say how now, with sophisticated pricing mo models, internet, internet barcoding, feeding into massive databases, how you can predict in nanoseconds what demand is going to be and you can do what they call again in business school, just in time inventory. You get a guy, he wants a very specific Infiniti QX80, whatever it may be, goes online, punches in his specs, you can find this car at dealer so and so there. That wasn't possible 30 years ago. You just had to buy a bunch of cars and hope a dude showed up to buy it. Therefore, what are you not doing? You're not wasting, you're not, sorry about that beep, I didn't realize my phone was, uh, was so loud. You're not wasting a bunch of time, Joe, and human resource assets building a bunch of cars nobody wants. Right. Therefore, you're saving human resources, your hands, you're saving metal, you're saving glass, you're saving having to buy all that stuff because just in time now, you can predict exactly what you need. A hospital uses a syringe, whatever it may be. They barcode the thing, right? It go, the signal goes out to the syringe company. We need two, three boxes more syringes. Just like wow. that. Just in time. It is a beautiful analysis of what's going on with the current economy. It is definitely worth your yeah. time. Um, so uh, check that piece out in the Wall Street Journal today if you can. I'm not going to put it in the show notes, folks, because it's subscription only. But combine just in time. Just one last note on this before I move on to this chart, right? And I've got some killer video. Don't go anywhere. Of the CBP they're just destroying CNN. But I say that because we do get a lot of bad news. And there is some bad news on the horizon, Joe. As I've said to you, our government debt situation right now in the United States is untenable. Not only is it untenable, it's getting worse, not better. Politicians in D.C. are doing nothing to control it. But let me just give you some good news. July 4th just happened, Independence Day, people in a good mood back from vacation. Just in time advances, the sharing economy, the explosive growth in artificial intelligence, quant, uh, quant computing, material science, medical science, I believe there's a distinct possibility we may be looking in the next couple decades at a level of prosperity we've never seen before in human history, Joe, despite the malfeasance of people up on Capitol Hill spending us into oblivion. In other words, I believe the economy and all these advances may be so powerful, they may overcome the cesspool of stupid up there on Capitol Hill, despite their best efforts to sabotage our economy. Okay, final note on the economics hmm. portion of, on, the, on the economics portion of today's show. <laughs> 
Um, hat tip at Martha Gimbel uh, does some obviously data aggregation on Twitter. I was uh, pointed out to this little chart. You know, one of the leftist conspiracy theories now about the economy is the economy is not growing for people at the low end of the scale. It's only benefiting the rich. Okay, well, here's Martha Gimbel's tweet. Uh, she's the research director at Indeed. This is uh, BLS data, Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is a very easy chart to read or very easy chart to describe. Ladies and gentlemen, hmm. the liberal conspiracy theory is this. Lower wage workers are not benefiting from the Trump economy. Only higher wage workers are. I'm looking at a chart that says the exact opposite, folks. The yeah, exact opposite. The government's own data. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Lower wage yeah. uh, income is up about 4.5%. Middle wage, oh, eh, about 3%. Higher wage income earners are up about 2.5%. So let's do that again for the audio listeners. 4.5% lower income growth. 3% middle income, income growth. Higher wage earners, 2.5%. I know liberals have a hard time with data. But ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen, what they're telling you is a complete, utter fabrication. They are lying to you. They are making that up. There is no disputing the data that lower income workers' wages are growing at a faster rate than higher income, almost twice the rate to be exact. They're just wow. making it up. This is what they do. They lie endlessly, fluidly. They lie just, it, it, it's, a, it's like a skill. They're like the Babe Ruths of lying. It is just so unbelievable. <laughs> they you know, they remind me of the yeah. remember Jose Okendo from the St. Louis Cardinals. The dude could play every position. There is yeah, no position on the baseball field they can't enact and lie while in that position. Congressman on first base, he lies. Senator on second base, he lies. Liberal justices, they lie. Liberal politicians, they lie. Liberal mayors, they lie. They're the Jose Okendos of lying. They lie everywhere <laughs> at every position. They are just making it up. There is no data backing up the Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden assertion. The economy is only benefiting those at the top. You are just making it up. If you believe in data, numbers, and science and that kind of stuff. Other than that, you're on your own. Oh. All right. Don't miss this CBP video <laughs> coming up. This is a good one. Allison Camerata getting absolutely torched on her own show. All right. Finally, today's show brought to you by... Gosh, are they lifesavers. Liquid IV. I would be lost without this stuff. I am really unbelievably happy to have them on for a sponsor. They sent me a few boxes. Here it is in short. It is this awesome tasting packet of stuff. Do I have one down there? Liquid IV. Yeah, I do. Hold up. Here it is. You get a packet of this stuff. It comes in a packet like this. It tastes absolutely spectacular. You dump the packet in a bottle of water. You down the water, and it's like being super hydrated. It turns your body into a sponge for water. Why would you want to do that? Because it's hot. It's the summer. Um, number one, you may be at the beach. Number two, you may be playing sports. Number three, you may be working out. Even in the winter, you sweat in the winter, you lose valuable electrolytes and fluids. This creates, it makes your water extra super powerful for hydration, turns your body into a sponge, liquid IV. Stay properly hydrated. It's one of the most important factors during music festivals. Hey, you spend a night out, you had a few adult sodas, you need to get some water back in you, liquid IV. Take Take it with you traveling. Get rid of jet lag. It has vitamins. It has electrolytes. It will hydrate you two to three times faster than water alone. Paula, how much you love this stuff? You're darn right she loves it. She runs out here, which I think is insane. I work out in the gym with the air conditioner. She goes outside. It's a buck 22 in Florida. And she runs up and down the block. But not without liquid IV first, okay? How do you get it? This is the way to rock and roll. You go to liquidiv.com. Use promo code Bongino and get 25% off. That's liquidiv.com, promo code Bongino for 25% off. It's non-GMO, vegan, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. Clean ingredients provides the same hydration as drinking two and three bottles of water. Folks, forget the sugary sports drinks. Liquid IV is the way to go. You will love this product. The reviews have been spectacular. Liquidiv.com, promo code Bongino for 25% off. Okay, let's get right to it. This is the El Paso uh, sector, the border chief, on with Allison Camerata. 
Allison Camerata, I think, trying to uh, sadly impugn the integrity of our Border Patrol, suggesting they're not providing proper care for children in their mm -hmm. custody. And watch what happens when a guy who understands the facts, who is actually on the ground and sees what happens every day in these facilities where we're holding these children who've been brought into the country illegally, in some cases trafficked. Watch what happens when he actually knows the facts. Are you saying that there were mm -hmm. not outbreaks of scabies, shingles, chicken pox, we've heard reports of lice and the flu. Are you saying that that did not happen? I'm saying the, the term outbreak is uh, not accurate. We encounter people from all over the world. When we encounter them and they get their medical screening, we often find that they have scabies, lice, chicken pox, the flu. We immediately treat those people. They're quarantined and separated. So the term outbreak implies that it's something somehow occurring or being caused in our facility. These are people that we encounter with these conditions. We address them medically, and we isolate and quarantine them from others. We have to do that in addition to all the other challenges we face. Okay. Once they leave the cell that they're in after they receive their medical treatment, then we have to clean that facility before we put other people in it. Okay. That's a, that is an important distinction. What about the bathing? I mean, what we have heard time mm -hmm. and again from the advocates who've gone in, mm -hmm. from reporters who's, who've gone in, is that the kids are not being bathed. And we've even heard the stories of the dirty diapers, the babies being in dirty diapers. So are kids getting, are children getting regular baths? Because we hear all the time that they go weeks, sometimes a month without showering. Again, you have to look at how we do things and the fact that these things are tracked. We have a detention monitor that, or module that tracks how long they're in our custody. Every two days, these children are getting um, offered shower uh, facilities. Now, we cannot make them shower. We can take them to the shower and we can put them there, but we can't physically make them shower. It's the same thing with brushing their teeth. We encounter children who've never brushed their teeth. We've had a lot of agents had to teach them basic hygiene. So, no, it's not true that people are being denied showers that, uh, or that these children are, are being denied access to these facilities. We make these things available. We encourage them. We brought in UAC monitors who are not agents, who are contract professionals to help encourage and assist children with these things. But no, these, these are not denied. These are, this is no secret that all of these aspects, food, water, hygiene, showers, laundry, we're monitored in all of this. These things are documented and we're constantly having to I show mean, how know, and why we do these. So Again, I probably should have played this after the opening cut where that Democrat strategist I debated on Ingram is trying to impugn the integrity of the police officers in this country. Clearly, CNN's Allison Camerata trying to insert rumor, innuendo, lying, disgusting, gross attacks on our CBP people, trying to insert them into the national conversation. So what do you mean? There's no outbreaks in the facility? Aaron Hall, chief of the... No, there's no outbreaks in the facility, Allison. We don't introduce chicken pox and deadly viruses into facilities with kids. Are you a knucklehead? Why would you even say that? Now, that Aaron Hall, the CBP chief for El Paso, how to even correct her on that is embarrassing enough. What are you suggesting? That we introduce deadly viruses into these facilities? Some of these children that come here are sick. They go to a facility that would happen in any daycare or anywhere else where kids get sick. And then Aaron has to explain, Mr. Hull, it's worthy of respect, Mr. Hull has to explain there that that's how contagions work. And we then isolate and quarantine that sick individual, child or, else, or, or other adult, and we then clean the facility before we take people back in. Is this hard to understand for liberals? Do you understand how insane these people... What happened to Allison Camerata? Who used to be sane? Are you suggesting we introduce pathogens into these facilities? Some of these children have never been vaccinated. They enter the country. Some of them are, have, a, have a medical condition. That, shockingly, she just found out infection theory spreads. So the Border Patrol does what they can in an unprecedented humanitarian effort at the border to stem the tide of people illegally entering the country. Illegally. 
in an unprecedented humanitarian effort, does their best to contain pathogens. Are we seriously having this conversation? You know I don't like extended clips, but that is worth, what is that, is it about two minutes, Joe, I sent you? Yeah, something that is like worth that. Every uh -huh. second. Secondly, we hear you're not allowing them to bathe. This guy's got to be looking, Mr. Hull, like, yeah. am I seriously answering this? No, they keep everybody without showers forever. The guy gives a reasonable answer. Hey, every two days they have access to facilities to shower. We can't force them in the shower. This isn't first blood where they throw John Rambo in the shower and start spraying him down. You can't force them to do that. What do you, I mean, what do you think these Border Patrol people are? Savages? You think they're going to drag someone who doesn't want to take a shower into a shower? That's not even ethical or moral. You'd be charged with sexual abuse. You can't strip people down and start spraying them. What do you think this is? What is... Do liberals think these stupid questions through? We try to contain pathogens. We give them access to facilities. If they use them, it's up to them. Then Alice Cameron, what about you're not letting them brush your teeth? Oh. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you. You need, like, neuroprotective compounds to preserve your mm -hmm. axons and dendrites on this show. Because watching this stuff, it's so puzzling that these people pretend to be sane and they say things so beyond the pale of stupidity. I mean, if there is a stupid marker, you have hit, like, of the 100-yard line of stupid. He says, uh, Allison, listen. Some of these kids haven't brushed their teeth when they come here. We have to have Border Patrol people teaching them how to do it. What do we have to do? Go through tutorials with you on CNN about toothbrushing now? Folks, they do this for a reason. These liberal networks love to attack the cops. Border Patrol agents are police officers. They are law enforcement officers. They are respected by Americans who understand they are doing a nearly impossible job right now. They are engaged in not only a massive law enforcement effort at our now evaporating southern border, but they are also engaged in, again, an unprecedented humanitarian relief effort for people who have violated our laws. And they are still crapping on them. It is unbelievable. There are outbreaks. Yes, we're introducing uh, Dustin Hoffman and Cuba Gooding Jr. from Outbreak are popping in in hazmat suits, introducing dangerous pathogens into these facilities. Oh, my gosh. All right, I, I can't lose any more brain cells. Seriously. <laughs> After years of boxing, yeah. I have to preserve every one I have left. All right, two more quick stories. So this is a fast one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, go shop at Home Depot this weekend. Uh, another liberal boycott, which will blow up in their faces. Hat tip daily caller will be in the show notes today. Please read the story. It's a good one. Boycott Home Depot trends on Twitter as Trump haters pan billionaires' plans to donate to President Trump's re-election uh, by Scott Moorefield. Nice job there, Scott. So here's the backstory to another liberal story that is going to cost you probably four or five IQ points here. Uh, Bernie Marcus, one of the uh, co-founders of Home Depot, has pledged a, a small fortune to help elect Donald Trump. Now, of course, liberals now want to boycott Home Depot because they're ignoring the fact that Home Depot um, and other executives there have donated to Democrats as well um, in the past. But ladies and gentlemen, um, seriously, I mean this. Home Depot should be celebrating today if they were smart. Uh, liberal boycotts traditionally blow up in their faces. Just ask Chick-fil-A and a number of other companies, uh, Land's End and others, where, uh, what was that, Land? Uh, L.L. Bean, sorry, excuse me, L.L. Bean and others, oh, yeah. where sales typically explode after liberals threaten a boycott. So if you're a Home Depot, it's probably a good time to buy Home Depot stock um, or go out and shop at a Home Depot. Liberal boycotts are, are really idiotic. They never work. But why is that? It's a quick note on this. It's because my experience, folks, with liberals in this, I'm sorry, I don't mean to impugn all of you, and I, I don't want to stereotype, but my experience dealing with the liberals I've dealt with while running for office and elsewhere is their conviction is weak. No, I mean it. It's weak. You go to New York, there's a Chick-fil-A right across the street from Fox News. It's packed 24 hours a day. What happened? I thought it was hate chicken, right? That's what you call it. The answer is their conviction is weak. 
They don't really believe any of that. They're not convicted. They're not, they're not, they don't own it. They say it because it's cool to be woke and fashionable. I hate chicken. Yep. You know, Bernie, I'm not going to Home Depot. I promise you, the minute they need a lug nut or a wrench, they're going right to Home Depot. And conservatives, by the way, who largely work for a living and have money, will go out and shop at Home Depot to make up the yeah. difference. Your liberal boycott is dumb. It's going to blow up in their face. Paula, remind me to go to Home Depot this weekend and buy something. Just for the, I, I don't even need anything. I'll just buy it. I'll buy I need some a more new tools. Home. I, yeah. You, do you? Yeah, I, do. I, do. I need yeah. a new set of tools. Paula, remember the last yeah. set of tools I bought? They're still gathering dust in the uh, in yeah. the in the in the garage. But I'll get some. There maybe a new drill. I haven't used the old one in a while. Yeah, screwdriver All right. or something like that. Moving on. <laughs> Folks, more economic debunking to follow. Last story of the day. Important, quick, but two important points. Not just are liberals running on this whole, the economy's not working for the little guy nonsense. They're also running on this $15 hour minimum wage nonsense, which is total garbage. Now, National Review just put out a great story. Be in the show notes again today. Please read it. Federal minimum wage would eliminate, eliminate, eliminate... 1.3 million jobs, CBO says, by Jack Crow, July 8th, 2019, National Review. Story will be in the show notes. Liberals love the CBO. <laughs> Quick story. I'm sorry. I don't mean to When I was in the police academy, we had this guy, Courtney. He was our, he was our tactics instructor. He was a funny guy and when I was in the New York City Police Academy. And we would have to do the nightstick training. And obviously, you do it on a dummy. You have to learn how to swing the nightstick on a dummy. So this one guy was like losing it on the dummy. And this Courtney guy, he used to say, simulate, simulate. <laughs> that was his thing. Like simulate. And I, I, every time I see word ending in eliminators, I always think of Courtney. Simulate, simulate. I'll know on the bullhorn screaming because this kid was <laughs> like it was a life. <laughs> simulate. All right, moving on. CBO, it's a liberal's love. They love the CBO. They cite the CBO all the time, every day, all the time. They love the CBO. CBO did an analysis of what the $15 hour minimum wage would do to the economy. And the answer is it would cost the economy upwards of 1.3 to 3.7 million jobs from the report. Quote, implementing a $15 federal minimum wage will result in the elimination of some 1.3 million jobs, according to the CBO. About 1.3 million workers who would otherwise be employed would be jobless in an average week in 2025, the report reads. That decrease would account for 0.8% of all workers and 7% of directly affected workers who would otherwise earn less than $15 an hour. So let's be clear now, exactly clear, because the liberals love the CBO, folks. Let's be clear about what we're talking about. What? Yes, some people will get a raise. That's not in dispute because the government's going to force people to get a raise. In addition to that, upwards of 3.7 million, as low as 1.3 million people, will lose their jobs. That's what you're supporting. You want to cite the CBO? Let's cite the CBO. Secondly, I found this story interesting. The Federalist, another good story about now that the women's soccer team, uh, you know, listen, I, I want to congratulate the Patriots on the women's soccer team who won the World Cup. Um, I've just been disgusted by the whole effort because of an isolated group who find the need to crap all over America, Megan Rapinoe mm -hmm. and others. It just it was totally unnecessary. But this has sparked this new conversation about uh, pay parity and income equality amongst women and men. So the Federalist, John Glenn, has a report up again in the show notes. Yes, there is a soccer pay gap. The women make more than the men do. Get a load of this. This is a subtitle. What? Yeah, yeah. Joe, you've been, keep in mind, they're arguing that the women make less than the men do. But get a load of this statistic. Last year, the Men's World Cup generated $6 billion. The men's. They gave 7% to the team. So follow, folks. The Men's World Cup, $6 billion in revenue, 7% distributed to the teams. The 2019 Women's World Cup made $131 million and gave out more than 20% to the team. So the guy's argument is you want to argue about pay parity, the men as a percentage of the revenue generated by the event are making less money, not more money. Again, <laughs> how about that? The <laughs> left, by the way, discriminating based on someone's sex and pay is already illegal. The left seems to have forgotten mm -hmm. that. 
Equal Pay Act. We already have a bunch of laws on the books. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot discriminate on pay based on uh, a person's sex. I thought that was obvious. Why are liberals doing this? Why are they again bringing up these kind of issues, constantly invoking racism, bad cops, border, bad border patrol agents, uh, women are being, uh, you know, uh, are being discriminated against in mass in the American economy. Why, folks? Because they don't have anything else. The Trump economy is exploding. It is like firing on all cylinders. They have to invent these charges to put you in a box and pretend they are your protector. Look, women, you're being discriminated against the economy. Look at what happened at the World Cup. Yeah, what did happen at the World Cup? They took a larger percentage of the revenue. That's what happened. Minimum wage workers. You're being exploited by those evil Republicans. Let's raise the minimum wage. That may cost you your job. Shh. Don't talk about any of that. They need to put you in this box, women, minimum wage workers, unions, whatever it may be, and say the Republicans are coming for you. We're going to protect you. It's the only way to win an election in a fiery economy like the one we have now. It's completely ridiculous, folks. It's absurd. Okay. Um, I was going to bring up something else. I forgot what it was. I thought I took a note on it, but all right. I'll maybe remember tomorrow. I want to close out with something. Forgive me. Sometimes my I take these notes like this. You see that? My, and uh, I usually write a note for a goodbye, and I forgot what it was. All right, thanks again for tuning in, folks. I appreciate it. Please go to youtube.com slash Bongino. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to the audio podcast. It's all free on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your audio podcast. I would really appreciate it. Those subscriptions are free, and they move you up the charts uh, so other people can find this. So we really appreciate it. It keeps our marketing costs down. Thanks so much, folks. I'll see you all tomorrow. All right, today's show is brought to you by our buddies at Brickhouse Nutrition. They make one of the finest nutrition supplements out there. Hey, here it is. Field of Greens. Field of Greens. Now, you'll notice that's empty. Why is that empty? Just like my bottle of foundation or other great product, I use this. This is the finest fruit and vegetable supplement out there. This is real food, Field of Greens. This is not cheap extract. This is real ground up, healthy fruits and vegetables, the key to a long, great, healthy life. Your cognitive abilities look better, feel better perform better, feel the greens. It's your fruit and vegetable insurance. I love it. Use the product twice a day. It tastes great. This is real, healthy, high quality fruits and vegetables. Think of it as your fruit and vegetable insurance for a long and healthy life. Go to BrickHouseNutrition.com slash Dan. Pick up a jar of feel the greens. This is empty. I need some more because uh, we use it, me and my wife too. Field of Greens, available at BrickHouseNutrition.com slash Dan. That's BrickHouseNutrition.com slash Dan. Pick it up today. You just heard the Dan Bongino Show. You can also get Dan's podcasts on iTunes or SoundCloud and follow Dan on Twitter 24-7 at DBongino.